eternity. Everybody starts out saying this is such an honor to be up here, and it is. It, it really truly is. I came in as a freshman, not sure what God had on my life, why I was even here. And I know a lot of people struggle. And let me tell you, you can get through it. My first semester, my GPA was a .25. <laughs> God laugh. I, I'm over it. I laugh now myself. Uh. But my point is, I will be graduating in 35 days. Yeah. So hang in there. It gets better. Find people around you. I, I want to thank the Bible Committee for having me. I want to thank those that have spoken to my life as I've been here. Mr. Millen, Brent Ingett, my wife, and Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm just a little example of that. Yeah, I graduated in 35 days, but I haven't done anything yet. And I had a youth pastor back in my hometown they got kicked off of a music team this freshman year because his grades were poor and uh, really wasn't sure what he was doing at Trinity either. And, and today he's the DYD of North Dakota, Nolan Sanders. <coughs> so don't let bad grades get you down. Pick yourself back up again and move on. Now that I've got that off my chest, <laughs> I'd like to turn to John chapter 11. I'm going to read 38 through 44. Before I do that, I'd like to open a word of prayer. God, I come before you today as a humble man. And I thank you for this privilege and this honor. God, as I begin to speak your words, I pray that they would be just that, your words. They would not be something coming from my mouth, but they would truly be from you. I pray for any freshman, sophomore, junior, senior that is struggling. I pray that you would pick them up in your arms of love and encourage them to go forth. Amen. We all know this story. It's a, it's a pretty common story, so I'm going to read it anyway. Starting in chapter 8. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there was a bad odor, for he'd been dead for four days. And then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always fear me, but I said for you the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus said this, when he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the, the grave clothes and let him go. I'm going to read 43 and 44 again. When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out in his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen, a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. There's many things that can be learned from this, this small passage of scripture. And it's, it's time as us as Christians to wake up. God is calling us saying, come forth. My first point is that we need to clean up our wounds. After as God has called us, he said, clean your wounds. And some of us have scars that are deep. From past hurts and things that we've done. And it's time to clean those up. In James 1.21 it says, therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. <coughs> we need to get rid of this. Lazarus was in that cave for four days. And it's hot over there. And when he came out, I'm sure he stunk. Real good. <laughs> but Christ loved him anyway. He said, you know, we're going to get you cleaned up, and then I will set you free. I've, I've been reading a book for one of my classes, and it gives an illustration of a beach. Beaches are so beautiful. I, I've never personally been to one. But what I've seen on television, they don't, have, they don't have beaches in North Dakota, so it's kind of hard. 
<laughs> but what I've seen, they're beautiful. I've seen pictures of several beaches. <laughs> but when, when oil spills happen, this oil, it, it washes up onto the beach. And it pollutes the beach. But it, as you walk through the beach barefoot, it, it gets to your feet. And it clings to them, and you can't wash it off with water alone. It's something you must scrub with to remove the filth of, of this oil from your feet. And God is like that. You know, we've got this filth on our feet, our bodies, because sin is attractive. Just like the ocean. And so we want to be out there playing in it, but it, it puts muck on our lives. And God wants to clean that off of us. Get right with God, because He's called you to. It's time to wake up, because God's got something for you. Next thing we need to realize is that faith is a factor. The Bible is, is full of faith. Many scriptures. And uh, it blows my mind. There's Lazarus, dead in a tomb for four days. Apparently, he was, obviously, he was in heaven. And God calls him and says, Lazarus, come forth. And he wakes up in that cave, not knowing where he was. What was going through his mind? It blows me away that he had faith to say, God, I'm coming. He experienced heaven for four days and said, I'll have faith to step out, come back down to earth, and do what you want me to do. The other thing is, is God called him out. And how easy is it to have faith when God is right next to us? You know, we're standing hand in hand with God, and faith is no problem. But true faith is keeping that faith after God has left. Yet God never leaves us, but we have hard times. And we have struggles. And that's where it's important to keep the faith. <clears throat> Another thing is that uh, He raised Him from the dead. How many times do we offer prayers to the Lord and say, you know, God, I stubbed my toe. Would you heal it? But we really don't have the faith. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And we don't have faith that God would heal our own toe or our broken finger or shoulder, whatever it is. We've got to have faith every day. Faith that God has called you. He's called all of us in this building. In several different areas, in several different ways, reaching several different people. But God has called you. Just like he called Lazarus. <clears throat> My third point is, after he called Lazarus from the grave, he said, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Now this was just take him off and so he can be on his way. But if we look at it in our own lives, we take our own grave clothes off and go. In, uh, in Mark 16, 15, it says, He said to them, go into all the world to preach the good news to all creation. He went. He sent us to go. He's called us to go in several different directions. And I enjoy that. Because there's going to be people in here that are going to reach people that I wouldn't even know how to talk to. In different fields. In different ministries. And I appreciate that. In closing, as we look at Lazarus, God called him to come out. Are there things in our lives, are there great clothes in our lives that we need to shed? Get rid of the filth and the stink from our lives. Secondly, we need to know that we have faith. God has called us. He has said, wake up, I've got something for you. And he will stand with you through everything. He will be there to hold your hand and to wrap his arms around you when you need it. And third, he told us to go. Graduation's in 35 days, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I, I love it here. I love everything about this school, but I'm ready to go. Make sure you're ready to go, even if it's just for the summer. Probably the coolest thing about this, this passage of Scripture that I realized was we don't hear much more about Lazarus. He said, let him go, and that's about all we hear. Where did he go? We don't know. But that leaves the door wide open for ourselves. God said, go. 
So go. In any magnitude. I know that in our lives we get scared. Because we don't know what God has. But know that God has it for us. And I challenge you today. If there's, if there's clothes that you need to get rid of. And I'm speaking of grave clothes. If you're, if, you're, if you're dealing with a lack of faith, God has a plan for you. I've seen that in my own life in the last week and a half. And then last of all, go. I challenge you today to go and do what God has called you to do. Thank you.